Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the SOAP Web Service Tutorial Series. For last couple of videos, we were looking into the theory part. So I thought let's go ahead and do some practical stuff in this video. So in this video, we will discuss about how to create a SOAP Web Service and how to publish it. Now, JAXWS provides the annotations to create the web service. So suppose if we have one class called number utility and it has one method called add numbers which can add two numbers and return the result. Now we want to expose this add numbers method of this number utility class as a web service or rather SOAP web service. First, let's create one dynamic web project. SOAP project. Select this 2.5 module. Next, next. Finish. Now in this project, let's create one POJO class number utility. In the package com.soap.services. Okay, now inside this class, let's create one method add numbers which will accept two numbers and sum it and return the result. As I had said earlier, JAXWS has provided one annotation called as at the rate web service annotation which we can use to mark our POJO class as a web service. So once we mark our class as a web service class, then all of its public instance methods will be exposed as SOAP web service operations. Now in SOAP terminology, the methods exposed by the service class are known as the operations. So from the SOAP point of view, we may be mentioning operations as opposed to the methods. Now, JAXWS has also provided another annotation known as at the rate web method annotation which we can use in the method level. So this annotation is used to explicitly specify our service operations and it is a recommended approach. Now, let's look at these annotations first and see how they work. So, annotate our number utility class with at the rate web service annotation Java X dot JWS package then annotate our method with at the rate web method the same package the point to note here is that the at the rate web method annotation is optional but it's actually a good practice to specify explicitly the operations of the service now the next step is to register this web service class as an endpoint and publish our class to some address or URL. Now this we can do using the endpoint class. Now what we'll do, we will register our class as an endpoint in one of our servlets. So let's create one servlet here. com.soap.servlets name it as my number servlet okay now inside its do get method we will use the endpoint class to register our web service class as an endpoint and publish it as well the endpoint class has two important methods one is create and one is publish we can use create method to create an endpoint object passing it our web service object and then it will return us one endpoint object which will be wrapping our web service object and later we can publish this endpoint object using its publish method to some URL let's do the coding for this endpoint equals to endpoint dot create
Okay, so what we are doing here is passing our web service object to the endpoint classes create method. So it will create an endpoint object which now wraps our web service object. So in effect what we are trying is we are designating our web service object as a SOAP endpoint and next we are publishing this endpoint object to some address which could be some URL here. So you can see that now our web service will be published in this URL and later this URL could be used to hit the service once it is successfully published and it is up and running. So this is it. Uh, guess what? We have created our SOAP web service. So the steps to follow is first mark our class with at the rate web service annotation then mark our methods with at the rate web method annotation. This is actually optional but this is a recommended approach and then use the endpoint class to register this as an endpoint and then publish the same endpoint to some URL. We should be careful about this URL here. This part should be a valid path. The machine name and the port number should be valid and it should not be in use. So we should be giving a port number which is already not in use. Otherwise we'll get an error like the address is already in use. And this path is arbitrary. We can give any, any path here. Let's do a sysout here. Okay, now let's build this and test it out. We'll test this servlet here. We'll run it on the server. Okay, now let's take this URL pattern of our my number servlet and paste it and hit it. So you can see that we didn't get any exception and our web service object is successfully published in this address. Now the question rises how to test our web service and call its methods. For this we need to create a client to call the SOAP web service and this we will see in the subsequent video. There are also a couple of tools available which we can use to test our web service like SOAP UI and Eclipse also comes with a web service browser which we can use to test. First let's check with the web service browser. We will see the SOAP UI in some subsequent video. Launch the web, web service browser. Then go to the visual main page. Now here if you see it is asking for the URL of our visual document. So what is this visual? We actually never talked about this visual. We are going to talk about the visual in great detail in some subsequent videos. For the time being, just understand that this visual is an XML document which describes the SOAP web service and it is an integral part of the SOAP web service. This visual actually identifies any SOAP web service. Once we have SOAP web service successfully published and running, we can get the visual document from the address where it was published. Like in our case, we published this web service in this URL. So we can get the visual document from this URL by hitting this URL from the browser and appending WSDL as a query parameter and this will fetch us the visual document okay so you can see this is the visual document here and it describes our web service we will discuss about this later now in our web service explorer in the visual page we just need to copy that URL of the visual which describes our service and put it here paste it and click on go you can see in the next page we are getting the operations which are exposed as a web service from our web service class. So in our case it is add numbers operation and that's why it's showing add numbers operation here. I'll click on this. Now we can test this add numbers operation. It requires two arguments so we can pass the integer arguments like 10 or 20. Click on go. We can see the result here. You can see the result coming as 30 so it has added the these two numbers and returned us the result as 30. So our web service is working fine. So this is the way we create a SOAP web service and test it. This is it for this video. We will see some more stuff of SOAP web services in the next video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.